Hello, welcome back to Consensus Distributed 2020. I'm Elise Colleen, Managing Partner of Stillmark, the Bitcoin-focused venture fund, and I'm here with the partners of Mantis Venture Capital, Milan Koch with Alex Paul and Drew Taggart of the Chainsmokers. The Mantis team combines an expertise in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin with a history and a depth and breadth of experience in consumer tech and consumer product investments. The half of the team that is the Chainsmokers, Alex and Drew, are the highest paid DJs in the world and in the past year have held a residency, a weekly residency in Las Vegas, completed a 42 arena tour, wrote and released their own music, played dozens of music festivals, and incubated a consumer blockchain tech company. Now in 2020, this hardworking group has come together to focus on the launch of Mantis VC. Drew, what is Mantis and what catalyzed the launch of this new fund? Hey everybody out there! I am I'm Drew. I'm half of the Chain Smokers. Um, I'm in my studio, uh, hence the neon lights. Um, my whole house isn't like this. Don't worry. Um, so we've uh, been enjoying enjoying some downtime, and we're very excited to uh, to be here to talk to you guys about Mantis. Um, Mantis is an early stage fund that invests in consumer tech, media and entertainment, uh, and fintech fintech blockchain. Um, we're looking to bridge those loosely connected sectors and create synergies within our portfolio. Uh, Alex and I have uh, started Chain Smokers about eight years ago, um, and within about a few years, investment was something that we were always very interested in, in pursuing, um, and we were uh, lucky enough to have the opportunity to to get opportunities to. to invest into a lot of uh, early stage companies about three years into our career. So that's been about five years that we've been uh, doing startup investing. Um, and uh, our intro into blockchain actually came from a company that we started called Yellowheart. Um, about two years ago, we started a company called Yellowheart, which uh, we set out to address the scalping problem uh, in the music industry, which is probably the music industry's number one issue. Scalping is a $4 billion uh, industry. Um, that rips off the promoter, the artist, and the fan. And uh, we, when we learned about blockchain, we saw that there was an opportunity to uh, integrate blockchain into a ticketing platform to increase transparency and uh, just create a, a, a platform where um, the three parties I just mentioned have control over the ticket and where it goes. Um, and we hope that that platform will eliminate scalping. So um, I'll let Alex talk a little bit more about why we're here. Sure. Hey guys, I'm Alex, uh, the other half. Um, so for those who don't know, we started uh, Chain Smokers about you know eight and a half years ago, like Drew mentioned. Um, you know, we weren't, we didn't have the money to invest in things at the time, but as gradually as we you know found more success in the music business, um, we began investing. We've probably invested in twenty plus companies now um, at this point in time, uh, not including real estate opportunities. Um, but we've always been very interested in uh, in the disruption of businesses. Um, for us, the music business being the first thing we did, um, people generally released albums in a cycle, and we were the first artists to release singles nonstop throughout the year. Didn't matter, there was no on or off cycle, um, which really changed the music business for, for good. And you'll see nowadays pretty much every artist followed us in that lead. Um, so that's been a huge, huge thing for us. And then as far as you know, the companies that we enjoy investing in, uh, you know, for us, we, we really want to be a value add for those companies. So, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit more as time goes on, but that was a, that was a big, um, big important role for us as we became investors and working with different companies. Milan, can you tell us a bit about your cryptocurrency and blockchain focus and what your investment mandate will be with Mantis? Yeah, totally. Um, so, hey, everyone, my name is Milan. I'm in my backyard right now because uh, we're quarantining and uh, so it's home office for everyone here. Um, so in the context of our crypto and blockchain pieces, we believe that <clears throat> the, the space is really mature at this point and that we have an incredible opportunity to drive ma mass adoption. So if you look at Bitcoin, for instance, um, from an infrastructure standpoint, Bitcoin is absolutely ready to be able to be mass adopted. I think one of the issues right, that we're facing right now is from an application standpoint, we're not quite there yet, right? Um, so we're really excited about opportunities that uh, we can leverage to actually like drive this mass, the mass adoption segment. And um, on the application layer side, because it's still, still so early, there's a huge opportunity for us to find companies that we can invest in. Um, and we want to, as Drew said earlier, we want to drive the portfolio synergies by investing in two loosely connected sectors. 
Great. And can you tell us a bit about what stage of company you'll be investing in, Milan? Yeah, totally. So we're looking to invest uh, seed in Series A. So we're looking at early stage companies. Um, our sweet spot in terms of check size ranges from two hundred fifty to five hundred thousand um, dollars. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to leverage our network and value add for our future portfolio companies. Wonderful. It's great to have new firms forming in the space. This year, Bitcoin has turned 11 years old. And from a market perspective, year to date, Bitcoin is up approximately 24%. And the broader cryptocurrency market in aggregate, including Bitcoin, is up about 27%. In the chaos of the pandemic recession, Bitcoin is beating the stock market, gold, corporate bonds, commodities, real estate, but yet it's still down more than 50% from its all-time high in 2017. Now, from an infrastructure tech perspective, the value offered by blockchain technology has never been stronger. For instance, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, we've seen the maturation of higher layer infrastructure like Lightning Network and the Liquid Network. Milan, can you talk a bit about why today, amidst the chaos of the recession and given where the technology itself is, now is the time for Mantis to be investing in the blockchain ecosystem? Yeah, totally. <clears throat> so we think that, um, as I said earlier, from an infrastructure standpoint, we're not quite there yet uh, in terms of mass adoption. So right now, as we see the Bitcoin ecosystem maturing, um, we believe that there will be applications and use cases that we can leverage in other industries. <clears throat> so if you look at Yellow Heart, for instance, uh, what Alex and Drew had, had explained earlier, there's a huge opportunity to leverage blockchain for the use case of uh, reducing the or reducing scalping or solving the scalping issue. So um, from an infrastructure standpoint, you see that we have a great infrastructure, for instance, Bitcoin, that uh, is able to be used. Um, if you look at Lightning Network, for instance, it's, uh, there's a numerous applications that are using Lightning Network right now. I think from an application layer standpoint, you have a huge UX UI issue, and we are very early in the ecosystem to build applications that can be used in a very broad sense. If you think about it from a consumer standpoint, right? Like, the consumer actually doesn't really want to be in touch with the technology. The consumer cares about an application that really changes their everyday life. So if I'm an Uber user or if I'm an Instagram user, I don't really care what database it's built on, but I care about the features. And I think right now is a very interesting time because we have this uh, great technology and we have the opportunity to leverage that technology with an application layer that essentially creates companies like the ones that I just mentioned. And what is also really exciting for us is <clears throat> the, the pace of the innovation in the Bitcoin and blockchain ecosystem has never been greater. So if you look at this bit of culture, um, crypto founders are so resilient. They don't really care about market cycles going up or down. They just build and ship products. And those are founders that we want to invest in. We want to invest. We invest in founders particularly because we are so super early stage. We really care about um, the team because the team can, the product can pivot, the team cannot. Um, so from an, from a founder standpoint, we really believe that uh, founders that have been in this ecosystem for a long time, that have been going through down and up, up and down cycles, are very resilient, and um, we would like to work with them. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Historically, you've each focused on consumer tech and consumer product investments. In your first investments at Mantis, you've backed a Bitcoin consumer company, Kaza, and a consumer fintech company. Drew, can you tell us a bit about how you identify the markets you want to invest in and then determine which companies are best positioned to dominate in those markets? Totally. Uh, we are comfortable investing in fledging markets that we identify as very likely to mature into massive markets. Um, even before most investors uh, maybe be deploying capital into the field, um, we're comfortable being early and first. Um, just as we have done in the music industry, you know, we, we aren't afraid to take risks. We have uh, kind of ignored uh, the traditional uh, way to release albums, the way to put, up, pr like put on and promote tours, and we've kind of created our own niche in the music business, and we look for companies that are, are willing to take the risks to do the same thing. Um, like Milan mentioned, we are also looking for companies that are integrating, front tech to, uh, integrating frontier technology into their platforms, but they don't. Sh that's never on the user uh, experience, part of the user experience. Um, 
there are so many amazing frontier technologies that are really making our lives better and more efficient. Um, and we believe that is the future. Um, but we really uh, appreciate the, the companies that hide the tech from from the user and they just realize that they're getting a, a better service, not necessarily needing to understand how how the tech works. Right, that makes sense. You wanna make sure that the consumer comes first. And I imagine that there's parallels there between how startups approach their consumer base and how the chain smokers might approach their audience. In the history of the chain smokers, it seems that you've really consistently understood and almost predicted what your audience has wanted. Um, and that allowed you to grow an audience of tens of millions. I know that you also have a close relationship with your audience, and I'm wondering if there's any lessons that blockchain founders, entrepreneurs in the audience today can take away from what you've built with the chain smokers. Sure. Um, I think the one lesson that's resonated with us as artists that I see so many parallels in uh, the startup culture um, is authenticity. Uh, we have, and I say that from, from, you know, an artist that's always trying to be authentically themselves and, uh, that has done that better at some times than others. And, um, you know, that's one thing that we realize our biggest moments of success is have, have been when we are acting fully authentically and we're making things that are built off of, uh, our personal experiences. The, the, our biggest songs are the ones that we have, have written from the truest place um, and our, our best um, uh, productions and our best tours have always been when it's just like when we've been so in tune with, with you know, who we were as artists. And, and it's, it's hard to stay that way always. And I, I will say that we haven't um, always gotten that right. But we have learned that our, our biggest moments of success have been when we are purely our authentic selves. Um, and I think that the, the parallel with, with startups um, is, I mean, for example, um, not to reference our, our company Yellowheart again, but you know we work in the in the the live space. The, the majority of our income is touring income, and scalping is our number one problem there. And we saw an opportunity to integrate uh, a technology, blockchain technology, to to create a platform that we just think is better. Uh, we know is better. That will that gives the control back to the promoter and the artist um, uh, to to create a. a ticketing system that doesn't take advantage of, of our fans. Um, and so we look for other companies that uh, their philosophy is the same. People that are very knowledgeable uh, in their industries, they work in the industry, <coughs> identified a problem um, that, that they want to fix for themselves just as they want, as much as they want to fix it for the world. Um, we invested in Casa, and uh, the Casa team is one of the best teams in the field. Jameson Lobb, who's Casa CTO, is one of the industry's leading voices on security and privacy topics, and he's been building Bitcoin security products for the last five years, which is half of Bitcoin's lifetime. Um, he's well known for his guides on Bitcoin and personal security, and Casa relies on his security experience when building new features and products. Um, He's a founder uh, with a special insight on the field and he's authentic and transparent in his work. So we look for people like this, that they're from, this is, this is their life. This is what they do. And they created uh, their company is based off of their experience. Um, so yeah, I'd say that those are, those are the parallels we see between, you know, our musical brand and the startups we invest in. Great. Thank you for that. Alex, quick question for you. Given the current conditions, you first started investing as Mantis Venture Capital after coronavirus had had global impact and the recession had started. How did that affect what you were investing in and the trends that are in focus for you now? Sure. Uh, well, I mean, I think it, it would be foolish to say that we all haven't been seriously affected in one way or another by this you know, pandemic that's happening right now. But I think any smart investor sees the opportunity in times like this. Um, obviously, in 2008, when the crash happened, all sorts of amazing companies came from, from a new need um, from the consumer, whether that was Airbnb or companies like Uber or obviously Bitcoin in this case, um, which I think presents a really unique opportunity right now to target investments um, in companies that, that play to those strengths. Um, obviously, Casa is a great example of that. I think with the banks lending trillions of dollars, and, you know, there's a uncertainty about what your money will be worth tomorrow. And obviously the benefit of Bitcoin is you own your money and it's, and it's yours. But then you've got to think about security and how do you protect that, that asset that you own is yours now. 
So companies like Casa are there to you know kind of solve that problem through their te technology, which is you know created to be consumer friendly and, and super safe and secure, as Drew mentioned before. Um, we're looking at mortgage refinancing companies, obviously right now with the interest rates and refinancing that's going on. We think that's going to be a really interesting era. And, uh, area, sorry, and we're also looking at other consumer trends to likely grow in this work from home environment. So I think if you're an investor right now, you know it's a scary time, but uh, if you can identify those trends that you think are going to continue to grow, um, it can be can be a really successful, important period for your company. Great, that makes sense, Drew. Now that we know a little bit more about what Mantis is looking for from founders, can you share what founders can expect from Mantis? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I mean, how I want people to, to, to view not just us, but our fund is, you know, both LPs and, and companies that other founders that we, we want to invest in. Um, I want them to view us as founders as well. Um, you know, you may know chain smokers as a, a musical act or just DJs or, or whatever that might be. But, you know, Alex, myself and our manager started this project eight years ago. Um, where we were DJing for $400 on a Wednesday night around Thursday nights around like New York city and no one cared that we were there or whatever. We were just kind of the background music. Um, and we've built that over the last eight years into a, a company, um, that makes hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue. Um, so I want people to understand that, that, that this is more than just a musical project and what we, what we have done, we are founders ourselves and we've built, we've gone through so many ups and downs. We've overcome so many obstacles. We all figured this out from scratch. Um, similar to every one of you out there that has started your own company, you had an idea um, and, and you believed in it and you know, you just figured it out. We've been through that um, in, in an extreme way. And so I want people to really um, feel comfortable that, you know, when we invest in them, that we understand that experience. Um, yeah. <laughs> Milan, where does Mantis go from here in 2020? What should we expect to see from you? Well, um, we are going to make investments. Um, as, <clears throat> as Alex has said earlier, we believe that there is an opportunity right now, especially with the, uh, with the down, down, economic downturn. Um, the macro trends that we have seen are obviously not very favorable for founders, but they are also... Um, breed a crowd of founders that are very resilient and uh, have the ability to essentially change the world for the better. And I think in times like this, especially, um, there are people see problems and people want to solve these problems. So we are active, we are open for business, and um, we're looking to engage with founders um, that are building cool stuff and uh, products that people would want to use. Um, from a trends perspective, I think, uh, you know, from a consumer standpoint, obviously there's a lot of things happening right now. Um, but as we're speaking at consensus, I think in the, in the blockchain context, I think, uh, there's a very interesting opportunity around digital rights management. There's a lot of opportunity in micro payments, tipping, for instance, content creators, um, the intersection of gaming and blockchain, um, technology that we can leverage in emerging markets, I think is super hot. Um, and yeah, and we are, we're looking at deals and we are doing deals and we are, that's, that's the funnest part of our job is connecting with founders. So really excited to continue doing that. Guys, thank you so much. What a fun conversation. I know there's a lot more to talk about in less than 10 minutes. The audience will be able to ask you questions directly via AMA. And so if you're interested in, in asking your questions to the chain smokers, to Milan Coke and to Mantis, please head over to Brella to join the Chain Smokers and Mantis VC for their AMA. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.